There, there we go. go. All right. What's going on, dude? What's up, brother? <laughs> Not much. Cool. You guys see you got the sweatshirt on? Yeah, representing. Nice, yes. nice. So <laughs> I know who you are because you're local to us, but if you want to maybe share a little bit of your company and where you're located so other people know and you could fill them in that would be great uh so i'm here in uh aubrey texas too um with will right around the corner really um anyways uh i'm a, I'm a veteran just like will too I, I was in the military i was in the army and uh, i'm from tennessee i uh i worked at ups for like eight years and I decided to move to Texas and uh, start a start a lawn care business. So I don't know. Here I am. It's like my first. It's like my first year, really. I kind of, I kind of came in like halfway last year when I moved down here. So yeah, you've been crushing it so far. So definitely appreciate you allowing us to do the call and everything. So um, yeah. cool. Well, what what can I what can I help you out with? What what questions you got? Well, you know you know I got a lot so. I, I normally are already hit Will with some questions, but um, I try to come up with some more. Um, so I guess really now where I'm getting like what I'm wanting to know is like when to hire the next person or like what, you know, what's my next move? Like when you're growing at a fast rate, like, you know, when do I need to hire the next guy? When do I need to buy the next truck? Uh, how soon do I need to get like some somebody on like the admin side to help me out with with just invoicing, uh, quoting, uh, all kind of stuff like that? Just all the admin work we do. Yeah. So that's a really good question. So um, especially in the beginning, because I, I have a little bit more insight of where you're at. So I, I feel like I can give you better direction. You know what I mean? Um, I think with um, in the beginning phases as you're growing your business in year one, two, or three, you don't ever want to like, you want to make sure that you're utilizing your equipment like as best as you can and as much as you can before you go out and purchase that next truck or mower or something like that. So like, for example, obviously I know you have, you have two trucks now or is it one? Yeah, two. Okay. So I would not buy in a second or a third truck until you have those two trucks rolling Monday through Friday, like eight hours a day with two guys in eat in this in in each truck. Two right? guys. Yeah. Like until like you, you can even get to a point where you're like may get to a point where you're like, hey, I may need to run like split crews. Like I might have a morning crew or like an afternoon crew, right? Because like even if you get to that max capacity where you have four guys, two in each truck. You could still have a evening crew that comes in to use once you once you start growing more, but you just want to try to utilize those uh, assets like as much as you can. Does that kind of like make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, so basically, max out before, before you know, max out before you you buy the next truck. Yeah, one one hundred percent. And so, like, and the other thing too. Um, when it comes to equipment, equipment, I know you're a little bit different because I know you've got the zero turn and everything, but like what we do is we, um, uh, we do the same thing with like mowers. Like if we, so like, for example, our crew is actually, this was, um, I think earlier this season, one of our guys were like nudging us and they were like, Hey, you know, I want to get a, uh, you guys need to get a 30 inch mower. Like it would be just so much better. We can cut those lawns. Right. And it's like, you know, we, I've gone down that path before, but I wanted to show them that, you know, I'm, I hear them, I listen to them and I went out and, and I borrowed Gabriel's 30 inch mower. Right. And, yeah. and I, and I gave it to him one day and I said, okay, here you go. And the property sizes were all over the place. They had some bigger ones, some middle ones and some small ones. Yeah. So the guy gets back at the end of the day and he's like, Hey, I, and I, and I went and talked to him. I said, Hey, so how's the 30 inch mower? He's like, Oh, I didn't even pull it off the truck. I'm like, yeah. well, why didn't you pull it off the truck? And he was like, well, all of my lawns like didn't need it. I just used the 21 inch mower. And I'm yeah. like, okay, so you just proved my point. I am not going out and buying a 30 inch mower for it to sit in the bed of the truck four days a week and us only use it for a half day on Friday. Like yeah. to me, that's not a good utilization of assets that the equipment that we have, I want to be running five days a week, eight hours a day. 
as as close as we can get to that you know what i mean so um yeah i I see what you're saying yeah that's um i mean that's good info um it is a little different with me i do take on like uh i mean i'll probably take on some yards that you wouldn't think you would use a zero turn on but you know i just kind of do it but you know because i'm still out there in the field myself trying to you know just any way to be more profitable i guess you know the more work i can do the more profitable i can be so uh yeah, absolutely but, yeah and like and like at the stage that you're at that that's okay you're still figuring it out right you're still figuring out what you what works what doesn't work you know maybe maybe you build a route that like two days a week you're using the zero turn and then the other three days out of the week you're you're using your 21 inch mower but then you can at least segregate it but like whatever whatever you need to do for like your routes or whatever you'll you'll kind of figure it out but as you grow and scale asset utilization is the best thing because if you go out and you and you i don't know let's just, let's just say for whatever i already know you have what i think a 48 inch or a 52 inch zero turn it's actually only a 34 inch so i fit in through oh, really? a decent amount of gates you would think I would fit into every gate, but for some reason they built like really small gates out here on some of the houses. But I do fit in through quite a bit of gates with yeah. that zero. But you know, it is it's sometimes it's kind of a little overkill. You know, the front yard is not much, and you got a tree right there. But uh, I don't know. It, I mean, it, it can speed the job up, but at the same time, you know, the the side, you know, maybe it doesn't give as good as cut as a push mower could because some of the grounds like unlevel and stuff out here. And just because the builders are throwing up these houses so fast and just uh, so, I mean, it has its advantages, but um, I don't know. I'm trying to build what I'm doing is, uh, you know, I'm, we're running basically two crews like me and a helper. And then I got two other guys out in the other truck. So any corner lots or bigger lots, I'm pretty much – I'm not letting my guys, like, jump on that one zero turn that we got yet because I don't want nothing to happen to it. So I try to keep those with me, like, the bigger yards where the other guys are going around hitting all the, you know, as you call it, the uh, – uh, what is it? Uh, what's the word? Cookie cutters. Cookie cutters. There it is. I was thinking <laughs> cookie cutters. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so it sounds like like it sounds like you got a good system down with that. I mean, I would just keep keep rolling with that. Um, I mean, it, it what whatever like works for you in the beginning, you'll you'll figure out like what what the what the best alternative is. But that that's kind of how I would handle asset u- utilization. Um, yeah, you know, uh, when it comes to hiring uh, more people, so what we do, so there's two there's two kind of pieces to this. So when it comes to field members. Um, we go off of budgeted hours. So, um, what what you'll want to do is try to figure out maybe because I know you. I think you use Yardbook, right? Yardbook. Is there a way in there that you can put a like a an amount of time of how long a property is supposed to take? Yeah, there is. Okay, there is a way. You know, it's it's you have to do a lot of work in Yardbook to get it set up. But if you put in the work in Yardbook, it can somewhat. It's not as automated as the, you know, service autopilot, but it's a lot cheaper, I guess. But yeah. So, so that's, that, that will work. Obviously uh service autopilot is a lot of work too, to set up, but it is a lot of setup at the beginning to get those budget hours, like all set up. But once you do that, you, I, I can literally tell you four weeks from now when we're weekly, how many budget hours. In fact, it's 102 because I ran the numbers today because I'm doing the same thought process of how many people are we going to need? So like, for example, um, let me pull up my calculator here. So literally I went to lawn mowing service and then for the entire week, we have 102 budgeted hours um, at the end of April. Okay. So if we take 102 and each crew can complete, we say uh, just to be a little bit conservative, about six budgeted hours of physical work a day that they can get done. Um, yeah. like we have guys that can do seven, eight or nine, but yeah. by June, July, August, it's super hot. So production goes down. So just to be conservative, we say, Hey, let's just say six budget hours each day. That does not include drive time, stops, breaks, or anything else. Six hours of actual physical mowing. Actual time on the job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if, we, if we divide that by five days a week, and then we divide that by six hours, that comes to 3.4. 
So we know that we need four guys to cover that mow route because we've done the legwork of figuring out, okay, these are the budget hours of the of the size property. And, yeah. and and you'll have to gather that data as you start to grow and like do this because I think this is what year two for you. Yeah. Yeah, two, one, one, or I don't know. So year like so like I don't know if Yardbook allows you to necessarily like clock in and out of every job, but you should start to track that stuff because what you're gonna yep. want to do eventually, in fact, we're actually doing it right now. Literally, Larissa's right next to me. You can't see, but this yeah. is her uh this is her seat right here. Uh, uh hey, what's up? she she's well, over here crushing it, crunching these numbers of of yep. square footage all the way from fifteen hundred all the way up to like eight thousand turf which is like our criteria that we do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what she's doing is she's going back from last year and all of this year and looking yeah. at our time clocks that are on all the properties of one man teams and two man teams, and then consolidating them all and figuring out, okay, a 3000 square foot lawn takes us about 30 minutes. Yeah. So that's, you know what I mean? So you just need that data and every. <clears throat> everybody's different, right? So your setup is going to be different than Gabriel's setup is going to be different than our setup, right? You may run a trailer. You may have to park down the road a little bit more. So like you may have more walking time to the property or yeah. you may have a 34 inch mower that you can just come in and go scoot, scoot, scoot. You're done. Yeah, so, yeah. so we're, we're running 21s where it may take us five, five extra minutes per property, but everybody's system will be a little bit different and that, but, 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 what you want to do, the core principle of all this is just make sure you're you're starting to beginning to clock your times. You and know? your book, your book actually does try that. My guys are able to clock in and then clock out on the job. So I, I can see, you know, I'm already seeing like, man, some of my yards, uh, you know, I need to, I need to go up just a little bit, you know, so I can, you know, for the budget, because what I want to be, I guess I'm trying to be at, uh, I don't know, we, I mean, trying to be about 75 is what I will trying to go for so i'm looking at i'm more looking at some of these jars that are post i'm thinking okay 30 minutes for my guy on this cookie cutter budgeted but maybe it's taking him 35 minutes every yard so maybe you know yeah exactly so now i gotta figure that out if that's what my budgeted hours needs to be or whatever you know so i'm starting to see it now now that i got this software you know last year i just hey you need your grass cut or whatever but you know this year i'm all right. Well, there. Yeah. But, Did you have and anything? It's a, yeah. So what we're doing too, and this is going to be something that you'll do, I'm sure over time. So we have it to where it's a certain amount of square feet and there's so many clients that'll fall in those certain ones, especially your more common sizes, like 2,500 square feet to 3,000 square feet. You'll have a lot in that category. There's so many variables. So some have alleys, some have corners, some have a pool or like extended back patio in the backyard. Some have, oh gosh, what else? There's there's just so many variables to them that, or fake turf, they'll have AstroTurf in the backyard. So it's like yeah. that one, maybe we, we make a little more on, but there's other ones where maybe there's 12 trees in their backyard and it takes them a little extra time on that one. So yeah. all I'm doing is I'm combining all of them and getting the average, because that's what I need is just the basic so, average. On y'all's quotes, I mean, how often, I mean, say you get 10 quotes for mowing service. How many are you actually showing up out there on average out of that, out of 10? Like, because, you know, I know a lot of these new yards are dirt. And then I know, like y'all are talking about, uh, I don't know if y'all are just trying to do them all from satellite or all of a sudden you look at the numbers, like, why is this taking it longer? It's only this many square foot. And you go, you go look at it and they got a bunch of pavers that you got to like edge around or something in their yard or something like that i just i was just curious i guess like are y'all showing up y'all having to show up at some of these properties to give estimates in person or or what the only one Zero. that we well the only one mm. that I actually have had to so we we've used google satellite first after that google satellite like in silverado doesn't have a lot of the newer developments with the house on them or even have it pinpointed However, we found that you yeah. can use a website like the Denton CAD and it's more updated and you can measure on there too. So that's helped me to where I almost don't have to measure any of them in person anymore. Yeah, that's a good point. Also, the ones with the new builds, 
they don't really have a lot of stuff in their backyards, to be honest. They don't have all like 15 trees planted. Um, they're a lot of really just kind of bare because they're brand new. It's the ones that have been there for a while that have like 15 trees planted. And then by that time on the satellite, you can't see. But just like Larissa was saying, it's it's the average. There's going to be some properties where you're making good money on. And then there's some properties where you're barely scraping by because they have the 10 trees back there or whatever. But it's the consolidated average. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. And you maybe just you could access it going into next year or something like that if you needed it to. Right. Something exactly. Like exactly. And that that would be a winter task. Winter rolls around. Hey, let's just check our property, yeah. see which ones we're making some money on and see which ones yeah. we need to raise, you know. And we did do that this winter. We did have some where it was like, OK, they've been with us. They are a certain amount of dollars below where they where we would be charging them now. And we're like, OK, we're not going to put them at the price that they would be at if they just booked as a client. Um, because they have been with us so long, but yeah. there is like a certain standard they need to be at too for us to make sure it's profitable. Right. You gotta be profitable. Um, that's what I'm really seeing too. I mean, you're always profitable when you're solo almost, but you know, once you got employees and stuff, you're like, you know, you just kind of see your profits definitely go away. You know, they get smaller and smaller and smaller the more people you hire. So, um, uh, yeah, that's good info. I, I, I'm definitely going to have to do that, too. I still haven't come up with, like, a set. I've seen Gabriel's. I've seen y'all's, like, square footage price. I still haven't quite done that. Uh, a lot of cause because I use yard book to pull up on satellite, people's uh, size of their yard, and I can, like, measure them. But uh, that's really all I'm using. And if I can't make it out, you know, I might try. If they're close, I'll try to, you know, I'll try to get by there and just take good eyes on it. And like, uh, but yeah, I'm just getting so busy. I think, uh, I think really what it is, I probably need to hire some type of office, somebody to help me out on something, on some side of something. If I'm going to be in the field a little bit still too, you know, like I, I need, I need some help on the admin side. Cause yeah, I remember when it's you so much by myself. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I, I think with with four guys now, um, you're you're getting to that point. Um, I think to be honest, like the sweet spot of when you probably should hire an office person person is when you get to that like above that two hundred and fifty thousand mark for the year. Man, um, yeah, I don't which know. which I'm not is a, which which is a bit of a stretch, and it's gonna feel like you're just running around like a chicken with your head cut off, but. Um, yeah, I mean that's that that's part of it because or or you could go the potential seasonal route and hire somebody for maybe a couple of months to help answer calls, but there's no way that you're going to want to keep them on the payroll for the entire year because right. at, at your stage um it's just not going to be really feasible, you know. Maybe, you know, just suffer through the spring rush and then maybe, you know, it'll settle down a little bit and I can yeah. I can still hand it for another year or something like that. So yeah, absolutely. Use the Denton CAD as much as you can or Google yeah. Satellite as much as you can. So I know you're saying like if they're close, you'll swing by there. But in the spring rush, like use that internet as much as you can. Because that I, Elizabeth in our office was able to save me three stops in one day just by using the CAD. So it yeah. does help. It gives you your time back to focus it on other areas in the business. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely, I'm, get back uh, to what I'm doing. It was good to see you, bud. All right. You too. See you. Yeah. Well, y'all, you know, y'all are awesome. So, you know, y'all helped me out since I moved here. So, I mean, that's pretty cool, you know, especially with like now the weed control too. That's probably where most of my questions normally come in nowadays is on the weed control side. But, uh, so that's good. That, that means you're growing. See, you don't, you don't ask me about like, well, I guess you do still ask me about hiring employees and stuff like that. But, a lot of the previous questions in the beginning are now evolving to to weed control yeah, right? <laughs> and all that other stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, it's it's. Yeah, I mean, this is my first business too, so I had different questions last year, and now they're you know now they're we did the I got my license and everything, and now we're doing that. So, but it's great that you're there. You know, you are there to answer my questions. You know, everybody needs that for sure. Um, 
I'll, I'll look to return the favor to somebody for sure, you know. Yeah. Even like Gabriel, he was like, you know, Will's busy, man, but, you know, he, I'm sure he'll answer plenty of your questions too, but don't, you know, go ahead, ask me, man. I'll help you out too now that I, you know, I'm starting to learn this stuff too. Like, you want to you wanna give that back to somebody once you, once you know what you're talking about. Absolutely. But, yeah, I think that, I mean, that, that that's why I do these videos, you know, I think it's the most, like, that's probably one of the most fulfilling things in life is to, is to literally help out someone else, literally help someone else succeed and not expect anything else in return, you know? Yeah. Um, but, um, cool. What, what other questions do you have? Yeah, I've been, I've been so busy. I was like, man, I ain't got no questions for Will. And I was trying to think of some on the fly. Um, but, um, I guess like, uh, I don't know, like as far as the weed control stuff, I mean, I might try to ask you that on the side a little bit. I mean, I know uh, some of the questions I, I'm before I ask you, I just kind of end up figuring out. But like, you know, it's like so important to let the customer know, like, hey, you're coming to spray. You're coming to spray tomorrow. Like, <laughs> and if you don't tell them that, you know, there could be some big issues arising. And, you know, I've just been kind of learning as I go with stuff like that, like you got to let them know you're coming out there to, you know, put chemicals down on their lawn and stuff like that. And, uh, me just jumping into it so fast. I, you know, you got to make mistakes to learn. So, um, and just making sure, uh, you know, you're reading the labels and doing the right thing out there. But, um, that's really, uh, I wanted to talk to you about like, you know, buying the next truck, hiring the next person, um stuff like that i guess yeah so yeah that's those those are those are definitely definitely big things for sure um and i know you've asked a lot of questions for the fertilizing and the weed control um i think a lot of it is just trial and error i mean as, as long as you just follow the label like if a customer calls they still have weeds just go back and retreat it for free you know what i mean like just just try to take care of them um make yeah. sure that the last round that we did, we actually got a lot of like complaints, but that is the time if there is a time to get complaints because the grass is still kind of like yellow and dormant and the weeds are like vibrant green. So like you can really see where all the weeds are and everything, you know. Um, but yeah, we we had a lot of complaints on that last round. I think we're going to try to critique some things for next year and just really prepare the applicator properly. So don't think it's like you're you're going to get complaints on the weed control uh, side. Uh, um, it's just how you handle them and fix them. And as long as you just tell the customer, like, hey, just let us know. Like, it's not an issue. We can come back and respray them. Uh, sometimes yeah. they're more stubborn, you know. Just let let them know that. So. Yeah, and then I mean, so if it's scheduled to rain that day, and you got fifteen, twenty sprays you're supposed to go do or something, so. Do you do you move that? Do you go ahead and like not take that chance that like, you know, I might spray and then all of a sudden that spray is gonna get washed away too quick. Even with the serpicant, I mean, we are using like serpicant and stuff to help it stick, but I mean, I feel like there's still like a risk of like we're out there spraying and it's just gonna get washed away. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, obviously, you definitely want to read the label. Most of the, the most of the chemicals that we use uh, say anywhere from like three to five three to four to five hours, as long as there's not a heavy rainfall, right, is what it, what it says. Now, in your scenario, when you're still kind of smaller, um, you can kind of maneuver your schedule around and things like that. When you're at a level where we have, like, obviously, uh, regular, like, employees that count on us for a paycheck. Yeah. yeah. If I had to reschedule it every time they were calling for rain, we would never get anything done. So. <laughs> yeah. What we do is we schedule it, whether it's a show for rain or not. Now, obviously, if there's like 100% and all this stuff, we may throw a lighter load on it that day just for the ex expectation. But most of the time, the rain usually gets pushed back or whatever. But in a scenario, like let's say we have 20 applications that we're going out and doing, there's 40% chance of rain. If it actually does rain, which it has, it does. It is sometimes. sometimes. It'll be sometimes. on the 14th property, and all of a sudden, there's some heavy rainfall. Okay? Yeah. What we do is we 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 basically try to wrap it up. Obviously, now, if it's a very light drizzle, they will applicate through that. 
Um, because to be honest, if they're fertilizing, it actually helps activate the fertilizer. It's really only the weed control that's somewhat concerning. So yeah, yeah, the post um, the post spray, yeah, yeah. But like we we'll get sometimes customers that will call us and be like, hey, it rained like this afternoon, and you treated me today, like, and then we reassure them, hey, the water actually activates the fertilizer. Now for the fertilizer for the weed control, what we do is we put the sticky product in there and uh the surfactant and we just and we just communicate to them like hey um you know as long as there's not heavy heavy rainfall for a consistent amount of time it should be okay and then we just say look if you in two weeks if you don't see any yellowing or wilting just give us a call we'll come back and retrieve um yeah. you know and that's that's basically how we handle it sometimes that's easier than than rescheduling your day with the with the few callbacks you'll get it's almost worth it to just stay on schedule yeah Absolutely. And like, but, but like I said, when you're, when you're your size where you only maybe have 20 or 50 customers, you know, you, you couldn't, you can really schedule them like, Hey, let's, let's schedule these ones on the dry days that they're not calling for any rain. But for us, we spray five days a week. And so we need yeah. to be pumping out and then, by and then, you know, you know how it is. Like we, we email the customer 24 to 48 hours in advance to give them that notification that we're coming. And then, you know, all of a sudden rain pops up day or two later that what they weren't calling for that like we just keep rolling and it, it now yeah. if it starts downpouring or something like that obviously we don't continue the application then we'll have to call it but um but yeah that's that's basically how we handle it but yeah really the label a lot of times we'll say three to four hours heavy rainfall um yeah that's what I, that's what i thought i read like four hours and maybe so but i feel like you know some of the stuff i don't know I just got tweaking, you know, I'm new in it. You got tweaking to do, figuring out stuff to do and stuff like that. But yeah. Uh, you know, I was like, well, maybe, maybe I told them to water it too fast, you know, and they wash it away. Maybe that's why we didn't get great results on the, and maybe the surfacant I used, you know, maybe it, I don't know. It didn't, you know, stick as much as I thought it was going to do or something like that yeah. to get some results. Yeah, but, as long as they if they rain if they water that evening, you're good. You know. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Just just make sure there. I think there's maybe one product that says wait 12 hours to water. I think there's yeah. one product, and it yeah. it depends. I don't know exactly what it's for, but I think there out of all the products that I've used, I think there is Most, one that says 12 yeah. hours. But yeah, and 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 I don't think we use it all the time, so. You know, just that that would be an account. But at the end of the day, yeah, obviously you don't want to. You don't want to risk like, you know, having to go back if you don't have to. Yeah. Know. Plus, plus the health environment for from it, too. Like you don't want to like uh, have to go intentionally back. like put chemicals down and then, you know, so yeah. you got to kind of be a little bit smart about it. But mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, we 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 schedule them five days a week if we know it's going to heavy rain and they're calling for a high, high chance. We may be like, hey, let's 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 just book him a half day route. See if he can squeeze some in in the morning before the rain comes in at noon of the morning. You know, that's that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good info. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I got unlimited questions. I don't know how much time you got, but you know, we can whenever you want to wrap it up, we can. But uh, you know, uh, it's good chatting with you. Just because, you know, we kind of look up to you down here as far as, you know, actually, you know, with that, you know, you, what do you got, like 12 employees or more or 15, 20? I think the most we've ever had was, what was it, 11? Okay. I think 11. At one ah, okay. I, I thought it was around like 12. I don't know. I was close, I guess. But yeah, we've we've really fine tuned our systems and everything. So like we actually. There's two of y'all, man. There's two of y'all. That's That's the thing right there. So yeah, y'all, man, that's a that's a difference. It's, it's we're the power power team over here. Power team, yeah, yeah. Yep. It it helps. Cool. I'm telling you, it it does help. Yeah, that's why. Uh, I mean, like like I said, we're different. Like, I'd have to obviously hire like somebody to help me out on the admin side, probably before y'all had to when y'all were in y'all's first second year or whatever coming up. It's just because it's you know there's two of y'all stuff like that. It's just a, it's a lot, man, to try to like really be reliable and like keep up with every single customer, answer every complaint, and then still try to answer your phone for every, you know, for every opportunity you can take to grow. And so it is a lot, but, you know, 
you gotta hustle, I guess. You gotta get out there and hustle if you wanna if you wanna grow. So Right. Absolutely. Yeah, there's uh there's four months out of the year that you're gonna be just running around super busy, which we're in it. There's four yeah. months of the year that you're gonna have your head above water, being like, All right, I can do this. And then the other four months are gonna be easy breezy, nice and slow, and it's like you just waiting around for the spring rush again. So um but uh but yeah. <laughs> Cool, cool, man. Uh, cool. Any other questions? I think we got like eight minutes left. Yeah. You got me for eight minutes. Eight minutes. <laughs> I better take advantage of them. You know, I'm going to text you or something, ask you something later, but. I know, I know. I... So do y'all have like a, uh, y'all have like a legit like CPA, do all those taxes and all that stuff, like handle all that stuff? Y'all don't do any of that? So I did the bookkeeping for the first three and a half years and I highly recommend it. So that way you have a pulse on the business. Yeah. But we just, yeah, we have a bookkeeper these days now, so I don't have to do the income and expense sheets every month. Yeah. Yeah. I just got like QuickBooks for payroll. So it's kind of, it's kind of easy, I guess, but I mean, I haven't got around to like, tax time like at the end of the year stuff um yeah hey dude, um, um i wanted to ask you on on your lawn applications are you are you giving the customer anything at the end of it like are uh, you giving a, a lawn assessment um a sign in the in the yard so i email? i got some like cheap signs off of amazon that just say uh lawn care treatment stay off lawn and that's what I'm using, but I've actually uh, went to turfsigns.com and I, I have ordered, I got some logo signs coming in the mail. Um, they should be in pretty soon. Um, they might not be around until third, third application, but uh, what, uh, so yeah, I don't, I, I just, you know, we got the signs that we put in, like stay off grass, you know, warning, uh, caution, stay off until dry, 24 hours, keep off. And, um, I've been sending out like, you know, a bulk message to like however many people I got the next day, like, Hey, we're coming to spray tomorrow. Uh, you know, make sure we don't irrigate our lawn, uh, for a little while. So the spray can dry, but we do want to, we do want to water, you know, soon so we can get that fertilizer, you know, activated and, and greening up your lawn and stuff like that. But I don't really have any like posts. Uh, so I guess I just tell them all up front, like, Hey, we're coming, this is what we're going to do. And we go out and do it. And then I guess if they have any questions, they ask. I think it might be a law in Texas to notify them prior of a pet, of a pesticide yeah. application. Um, yeah. and then I think, I don't know if there's a follow-up that you have that's regulated per se, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, we just put yard signs in. And that helps them kind of know that we were there because obviously they can't see the treatment. So it is it it is it a law that we have to put the yard sign in their yard? No. After we treat it? It's no. not. Okay, I didn't think so. I never heard that, but I mean of course you want to, I guess, but yeah, I was curious about that. I don't know. Because there might have been a couple that we were like, Oh, we forgot to put one in there or something. But yeah. but yeah, I got some ones with uh with my logo coming nice i didn't get them i didn't get them cut to shape and all fancy yet maybe next year i got well it's got my logo on there i didn't get it cut to shape yet maybe maybe next year baby we'll steps see. that's all yeah, yeah hey just just keep moving <laughs> forward just get better each and every day you know right so yeah we're getting there yeah well cool man well all uh, right thanks for jumping on the call Give me a yeah. call or a text whenever you need, whenever you got questions, obviously you got my number. So, um, All right. but you're out there crushing it. So just, just keep, this is, um, I watched a video actually of Mike Andy's video and he kind of, he mentioned this and I, and I like it a lot, but he said, um, the spring rush builds men. So mm. that's, that's just, mm. just know ah. you're, you're, you're in the grid of it right now. This is what separates okay. A lot of people that, you know, make it through or don't make it through, whatever, just yeah. buckle down, put your head down, and it's going to be busy. And you may have to do office stuff after hours, or once you get back from a, a physical route at three, four o'clock, 
and do office stuff for two or three hours to get emails caught up and stuff, but at least, right? At least. Yeah. So, but yeah. Well, cool, man. That's 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 a good tip right there. That encouraged me even more. Yeah. I gotta get through it, dude. So, <laughs> Spring rush. Let's get Spring after rush. it. Thanks yeah. for um uh, thanks for everything, man. We'll talk to you later. Absolutely. Give me a shout. All right, bro.